Hey, welcome into Weather Nation. It is a October snowfall in Aspen, Colorado. As we take you to a time lapse from earlier, snow is falling in the Rockies, continues to be. We'll talk about how much longer some of that white pow sticks around. Yeah, golden, white gold, as they call it in the West End. Of course, across the east as well, hasn't fallen there too much. And then we are also covering the widespread flooding in Texas, especially Southeast Texas today. Yeah, we've also got the heat building into portions of the eastern United States, but a frontal boundary pushing through may spawn some strong and severe weather across portions of the Midwest in the coming days. It is a bit of an active pattern for the central and eastern United States with well above average temperatures yep. into the second or third full week of October. Hey, we're getting to the middle part of October, not really feeling too much like it. Mm -mm. We passed a milestone this uh, earlier this week, Lucy. We now have less than 50 days to go for the hurricane season. Yeah, I think Steve's got a little bit of a countdown going. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> come on, get me to the end as fast as possible. Uh, news came out though that mm -hmm. may affect the hurricane season today. Uh, the Climate Prediction Center, NOAA, also putting out that La Nina is officially here. If you go onto the website, they even put an exclamation point at the end of that sentence. La Nina is here, exclamation point. Uh, that means that we have some cooler than average sea surface temperatures there in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. You probably hear the words, El Nino, La Nina tossed around. Let's talk to the expert, expert Tom DiLiberto. He is a meteorologist and climatologist at climate.gov. So Tom, thanks for your time. Kind of begin with what La Nina is since it's here. Sure, so a La Nina refers to the ocean waters in the central and eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean being cooler than average. And what that basically does is it jumbles up the entire atmospheric pattern above the tropic, which is kind of like the first domino to fall. Um, and then and that can affect where the jet stream sets up this winter across the United States and impacting the weather and climate we see here. And I understand next week, the initial winter outlook is going to be coming out. We'll get to that in a second. Do you know if, if at all, if this will have any impact for the, the short remainder of the hurricane season? It can certainly have an impact, and we've certainly seen similar sorts of patterns that are consistent with what we'd expect a La Nina to do. La Ninas in general lead to a more active hurricane season in the Atlantic and uh, in, in a in a calmer hurricane season, the Pacific Ocean. So we could potentially certainly see that affecting the end of the hurricane center. But as you said earlier, um, it's good news that the end of the hurricane season is hopefully fast approaching. All right. And I know that we have to wait until next week before that first winter outlook comes out. Is there any insight maybe to what history has told us or maybe you can sneakily uh, slide into us here at Weather Nation of what that might entail for the season? So in general, when a La Nina happens, the most consistent patterns that we see set up across the United States is that we, it tends to be drier across the southern tier of the United States, with there potentially being more, uh, at least uh, wetter conditions across the Pacific Northwest and cooler temperatures across, let's say, the northern tier of the United States. Now, this is a schematic, so it's no guarantee about what's going to happen, as we all know. And so while well, La Nina isn't the only game in town when it comes to things that could affect um, our winter climate patterns, but it certainly is probably the most predictable. Um, and it's certainly something that does have a lot of skill when we're looking at predicting what may happen this winter. I know we have we have El Nino and La Nina. We have neutral kind of in the middle, but everyone's different. You know, they're just kind of characteristically different. My final question for you, Tom, uh, you dive into this stuff every day. You research it. Uh, you work hard at it. You know, what, what should people pull out of it? What's important about knowing whether the water temperatures here in the equatorial Pacific Ocean? So the benefit that we know ha that we have from La Nina is the fact that we know it's going to happen ahead of time. We know in general how long it's going to last, and we know what it typically does in a winter time frame across the United States. Now, as you said, the, each event is different, and each event leads to different things happening here in the United States. But the benefit that we have with the La Nina and knowing with an eighty percent, eighty-seven percent chance that's going to last through the winter is it allows people to prepare now. Um, for what may happen later on this year. Um, and that sort of lead time is very helpful um, for a lot of people in a lot of industries. I appreciate your time, Tom. Good work. And we'll look forward to next week's report, too, in the winter. Everybody's always, you know, it's one of our most commonly asked questions as meteorologists. What, what's this winter going to be like? All right, Tom, be well. Have a good winter. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, now we'll get over to the radar because speaking of snow, we have meteorologist Lucy Bergman tracking some. Yeah, along and just to the west of I-25.
into portions of Colorado. We've got that snow mixing into the high country. Unfortunately, it has caused accidents along I-70. We're hearing that uh, Silverthorne towards the Eisenhower Tunnel, which if you're familiar with that area, very highly trafficked portions of I-70 closed due to accidents. So keep that in mind. We've got that snow mixing into Teller County and parts of the high terrain. Well, right here, this is Pikes Peak, uh, and we're starting to see some snow at 14,000 feet. Not the first time this season, but when you're up that high, it's not all that uncommon that you see some snow a little bit quicker into those higher peaks of the Continental Divide and Front Range of Colorado. Also some snow mixing in for the San Juans at this point. Little bit of thunderstorm activity out towards Grand Junction, the western slope. Snow still ongoing into portions of the Wasatch Range of Utah, but that is wrapping up and we've got some snow still impacting the Tetons and the Wind River. As we zoom this out into the western United States, we've got some snow dotting those higher elevations. But back into the central United States is where we're seeing more of our wet weather activity today. Lafayette down towards Terre Haute into portions of Indiana dealing with some of that rain shower and thunderstorm activity. As we turn on the lightning counter, not a whole lot of thunderstorm activity here, even as we head up into Michigan. Just one stronger storm north of Flint. That may lead to some localized flooding concerns, but generally up into the mitten, we do have some pockets of heavy rain. Down into Missouri and Arkansas also watching some showers and storms, but but we are dry right now in Oklahoma City and that dry air leading to sunshine and the concern for severe weather as we head into the afternoon and mostly into the evening and overnight as we quickly show you where that severe weather outlook lies today. Lawton to Oklahoma City to Tulsa. Before we go, some really heavy rain still impacting parts of coastal Texas. Lake Jackson down south of Corpus Christi with flash flood alerts now allowed to expire. We will be right back with some of your top weather headlines and your regional forecast, but during the break, head over to our Instagram, give us a follow, DM us some of your best images from where you are.